Welcome to ReneeEnergy.com on YouTube, the hub for all things renewable energy and sustainability. Green hydrogen is quickly transitioning from a niche concept to a foundational pillar of clean energy economies. In this episode, we'll break down what green hydrogen is, how it's produced, why production costs are falling, and which industries stand to benefit most. By the end, you'll understand why hydrogen is essential for decarbonizing hard to electrify sectors, and how AI's role in optimizing green hydrogen production will accelerate the transition. The most fundamental question is, what exactly is green hydrogen? Simply put, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, but it rarely exists as a free gas on Earth. To produce hydrogen, we must separate it from other elements, most commonly water, H2O, or hydrocarbons. When hydrogen is produced using renewable electricity, wind, solar, hydropower, to power electrolyzers, devices that split water into hydrogen and oxygen, no carbon emissions occur. Because these electrolyzers operate on zero carbon electricity, the resulting hydrogen is labeled green. In contrast, gray hydrogen is generated from fossil fuels, typically natural gas via steam methane reforming, SMR, creating 9 to 12 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of H2. Blue hydrogen also stems from SMR, but it captures and stores most of the CO2 through carbon capture and storage, CCS, leaving a smaller carbon footprint, albeit with continued reliance on fossil feedstocks. Electrolysis technologies come in several flavors, alkaline, proton exchange membrane, PEM, and solid oxide. Alkaline electrolyzers have been around the longest, dating back a century. They use a liquid alkaline electrolyte, for example, potassium hydroxide, and nickel-based electrodes. These systems are relatively inexpensive and proven at scale but have slower dynamic response to fluctuating power inputs, less ideal when coupling with variable renewables. Chem electrolyzers, on the other hand, use a solid polymer membrane to conduct protons from the anode to the cathode. They boast faster ramp-up capabilities, higher current densities, and more compact footprints, making them better suited for integration with intermittent solar or wind farms. However, PEM systems rely on expensive precious metal catalysts, platinum, iridium, and can have higher capital costs. Solid oxide electrolyzers operate at high temperatures, around 700 to 900 degrees Celsius, allowing them to use waste heat from industrial processes and achieve high efficiencies, but their materials are still nascent and best suited for large, stable installations rather than intermittent operations. Why is green hydrogen gaining traction now? Three converging trends explain the sudden surge, rapidly falling renewable energy costs, electrolyzer technology improvements, and growing policy support. Since 2010, the global weighted average levelized cost of electricity, LCOE, for solar has fallen by roughly 85%, from around 37 cents per kilowatt hour to under 5 cents per kilowatt hour in many sunny regions. Wind power has likewise dropped to $0.04-$0.06 per kilowatt hour in prime locations. With renewables now the cheapest source of electricity in many markets, the fuel cost for electrolysis has plummeted, making green hydrogen more competitive. Concurrently, electrolyzer manufacturers, such as Nell, ITM Power, and Cummins, have scaled production, driving unit costs down. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, the cost of electrolyzer stacks fell by 60% between 2015 and 2020, and further reductions of 50% or more are expected by 2030 as manufacturing scales and new materials are commercialized. Policy support is the third catalyst. In Europe, the EU's 2020 hydrogen strategy targets 40 gigawatts of electrolysis capacity by 2030 and aims for 10 million tons per year of renewable hydrogen imports. The EU's hydrogen bank will provide 3 billion euros in grants to lower offtake risks and attract private capital. In Germany, 9 billion euros earmarked to build 5 gigawatts of domestic electrolyzer capacity by 2030, plus 5 gigawatts of imports. France committed 2 billion euros to scale up green hydrogen and support heavy industries decarbonization. Meanwhile, in Asia, Japan's basic hydrogen strategy targets 3 million tons of hydrogen consumption by 2030, focusing on domestic production and imports. Australia's national hydrogen strategy identifies hydrogen as a key export commodity, projecting 11 billion Australian dollars in export value by 2050. Even the United States has dramatically increased R&D funding under the DOE's hydrogen shot which aims to achieve $1 per kilogram of clean hydrogen within a decade. With this backdrop, let's examine how green hydrogen will penetrate various industries. Heavy industry, steel and cement. Steelmaking today relies heavily on blast furnaces powered by coal. 
The direct reduced iron DRI, process offers a lower carbon alternative, using hydrogen as the reducing agent to strip oxygen from iron ore. When hydrogen is green, the entire process can be near zero carbon. Several pilot projects are underway. Sweden's Hybrid Initiative, a collaboration among Saab, Lakab, and Vattenfall, aims to replace coal with hydrogen in steelmaking, with a goal to scale to full commercial production by 2030. Cement production, likewise, can substitute hydrogen for fossil fuels in high temperature kilns, though this requires adaptations in burner technology and implies high hydrogen consumption. Transportation, buses, trucks, rail, and shipping, fuel cell electric vehicles, FCFs, combine hydrogen in a fuel cell to produce electricity on board, emitting only water vapor. In mass transit, cities like Cologne, Germany, and Aberdeen, Scotland, have deployed hydrogen-powered buses to cut urban pollution, and France recently announced a mandate that all new buses in major cities be zero emission by 2025, fuel cells being more practical for long routes than battery electric buses due to faster refueling. Heavy trucks and long-haul freight also see promise. Nikola Motor Company and Toyota have unveiled Class 8 hydrogen fuel cell prototypes. In rail, Alstom's Caradia i Lint, the world's first hydrogen-powered passenger train, has been operating in northern Germany since 2018. Maritime shipping poses perhaps the greatest challenge, ammonia, NH3, synthesized from green hydrogen is gaining attention as a zero-carbon marine fuel alternative to liquefied natural gas, LNG, with companies like Yara and Wurtzila testing engine systems and bunkering infrastructure. Chemical and refining, ammonia and methanol production, ammonia, NH3, production, currently responsible for around 1% of global CO2 emissions, depends on hydrogen derived from natural gas. Green hydrogen can decarbonize ammonia plants used for fertilizers, transitioning to renewable routes. Equally, methanol, a building block in petrochemicals and an emerging shipping fuel, can be produced from hydrogen and captured CO2, creating a carbon-neutral or even carbon-negative cycle. Several pilot plants, from North Africa to Australia, are developing renewable ammonia for fertilizer export and as a clean fuel for power generation or shipping. Power generation and grid balancing. Hydrogen can be converted back to electricity via fuel cells or gas turbines, though current round-trip efficiencies, electrolyzer compressor storage fuel cell, hover around 30 to 40 percent, lower than batteries. But for long-duration storage, days, weeks, or seasons, hydrogen's energy density and ease of storage become competitive. Systems like the 1 megawatt 4 megawatt hours fuel cell plant in Kobe, Japan, demonstrate how hydrogen can serve as backup or peak shaving for utilities. In island nations or remote microgrids, like the Orkney Islands in Scotland, hydrogen electrolyzers are already used to store excess offshore wind energy, providing grid stability and replacing diesel generators. Residential and commercial heating. In colder climates, blending green hydrogen into existing natural gas networks at 5 to 20% by volume can reduce CO2 emissions without extensive infrastructure upgrades. Some pilot projects in the UK, High Deploy, and the Netherlands, H-Gate, are injecting hydrogen into local gas grids for residential heating, cooking, and small-scale combined heat and power, CHP. As blending ratios rise, boiler technology and pipeline materials may need retrofitting, but hydrogen's compatibility with existing systems offers a transitional pathway. Understanding these applications, it's clear why production capacity must scale dramatically. The Hydrogen Council projects that by 2050, hydrogen could meet 18% of global energy demand, requiring roughly 2,500 gigawatts of electrolyzer capacity, up from about 0.25 gigawatts today. Market analysts estimate that to hit that target, electrolyzer manufacturing needs to increase tenfold by 2025 and twentyfold by 2030. Achieving these milestones demands robust supply chains for key components, catalysts, membranes, power electronics, alongside secure sources of critical materials such as platinum, iridium, and nickel. This is where AI enters the story again. AI-driven materials discovery platforms can simulate thousands, or even millions, of candidate catalyst formulations in silico, narrowing down promising options that reduce or replace precious metals. By leveraging machine learning models trained on experimental data, electrochemical performance metrics, durability tests, and cost factors, researchers can accelerate the development of low-cost, high-efficiency catalysts for PEM electrolyzers. Similarly, AI can optimize stack design, operating parameters, and maintenance schedules by analyzing real-world performance data and predicting degradation pathways. 
These innovations reduce both OPEX and CAPEX over time, pushing green hydrogen toward cost parity with grey hydrogen in many regions. Yet, numerous challenges remain in scaling green hydrogen. Water availability is a concern in arid locations. A single megawatt hour of electrolysis consumes roughly 18 kilograms of water. Regions without reliable freshwater sources may need desalination or access to treated wastewater, increasing complexity and costs. Grid interconnection can also be a bottleneck. Many best renewable resources lie in remote areas, such as Australia's outback or the Chile and Atacama Desert, requiring long transmission lines or local hydrogen production and export solutions. On the policy front, chicken and egg dynamics persist, industries are reluctant to commit to hydrogen without guaranteed supply, while producers hesitate to build facilities without long-term offtake agreements. Governments can mitigate these risks through funding mechanisms, contract for difference, CFD, schemes, or infrastructure grants that guarantee minimum revenue for producers or lower capital costs for buyers. All these factors converge toward the central point, for green hydrogen to fulfill its potential, we need smart integration with digital tools. AI will remain indispensable across the value chain, materials discovery, process control, predictive maintenance, dynamic scheduling, and logistics optimization. By embracing AI-driven platforms, hydrogen producers can maximize uptime, reduce energy waste, and accelerate cost declines. Data pipelines, both from sensors on electrolyzers and external sources like weather feeds and electricity markets, will feed machine learning models that orchestrate hydrogen production in real time maximizing revenues during low-cost periods and minimizing downtime during maintenance events. In Episode 4, AI plus Electrolysis, Supercharging Hydrogen Production will dissect how machine learning algorithms optimize every aspect of electrolyzer operation, from fine-tuning stack temperature to predicting membrane failure weeks in advance. We'll explore case studies where AI has driven 20% efficiency improvements and lowered OPEX by as much as 30%. You'll learn about key performance indicators, KPIs, that AI models track, such as voltage polarization, current density uniformity, and catalyst loading, and see how digital twins of electrolyzer plants can accelerate R&D cycles. Before we close, here's your quick action item. If you haven't already, download ReneEnergy.com's Green Hydrogen Feasibility Study Template. With this tool, you can start building a techno-economic model in Excel to project capital costs, operating expenses, revenue streams, and return on investment ROI, for a hypothetical green hydrogen project in your area. Coupling that template with our reading list, featuring Irena's hydrogen cost reductions roadmap and the US DOE's hydrogen shot details, will prepare you for the hard numbers we tackle in upcoming episodes. Thank you for watching Episode 3 of Why Green Hydrogen is Critical in the Global AI Race. Hit subscribe, ring the notification bell, and leave a comment below, which application of green hydrogen, steelmaking, transportation, or grid storage, do you find most compelling, and why? We'll be answering your questions and sharing additional resources throughout the series. Join us next time as we explore the critical role AI plays in optimizing hydrogen production, unlocking efficiency gains that make green hydrogen an economically viable fuel. Until then, stay informed, stay engaged, and remember, the energy transition requires both innovation and collaboration to succeed. Thanks for tuning into the ReneEnergy.com YouTube channel. We trust you found this episode and